Let's begin with a question. It might sound simple to you at first, but I pray you to think about it. What distinguishes a free man from a slave? For now, however, let us start this story where another one ended. Vietnam Man is a mysterious character in Enderal. We never really get clear information about him. It seems just another popular myth until we actually get to meet him during one of the most gothic, haunting, suspenseful segments in the game. And then we are too spooked and dazed to actually understand anything of the strange things we saw and the creepy words the Asian Man said. Only when we are out of his manner, not even knowing how, we try to process, what did just happen, and what does this all mean? Who is the agent man? Try me, any explanation is better than none. The short answer, we don't know. But we are given bits and pieces of information which we can put together. First a word of warning, there will be major spoilers so you might want to finish your playthrough before proceeding. So, where do we start? Has the Grandmaster already informed you of the goal of this mission? Yes, the Grandmaster tells us a great deal about the mission, using a legendary artifact, the Word of the Dead, to read the memories of a frozen Parian, to find the words of an ancient ritual, to enable the powers of a siege stone, and so on and so on. But he doesn't say much about the owner of the artifact, a collector better known as the Agent Man. Only when we ask why we don't just grab the artifact, Tillor draws the interesting fact that even the light board said the Agent Man is not to mess with. A good question, but no. The Agent Man is special, so to speak. Even the Lightborn ordered us to let him live in peace. The Black Guardian knows why. And that's it. Tillor doesn't tell us more, and we are thinking about this artifact we have to find, and the Parian priest who's chilling just there, who cares about the collector. However, Jespar adds another interesting detail. Never walked back on the road from the aged man's abode. Wait a moment. What did you just sing? Well, this is... There's an old manor in Andral's West that belongs to an old collector of artifacts. We received a tip that the word of the dead is in his possession. Hang on. Are you talking about this odd fellow with the puppets? The aged man from the folk song? I am. The song of the aged man, of course, an Enderillian favorite, sung by young and old all around, and by Jespar already when we first met him. Sure. Do you know the ancient man of whom no one knows from whence he came? His house lies on the edge. Ba -da 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 -da. If you batter at his door, say farewell to our world. For everyone who entered to never walked back on hey! the road From the aged man's abode Ugh, blazes. Sorry. I know. I can't sing. The song tells of a man who lives alone on a remote cliff, in a place with creepy vibes. Nobody knows where the man came from, not even his real name is known. He carves wooden dolls, which can be seen around his property. The song also repeats that whoever enters his manor is never seen again. Which is why you and the mercenary are well suited for the task. 
No one will connect your faces to the Holy Order. Thank you, Tealer. Already when we approach the house, we start noticing strange things. The weather suddenly turns rather gloomy. We see a skeleton on the way, maybe a warning. And of course, the creepy dolls. So these are the puppets the bards have been singing about. Huh, interesting to see what some people consider art. Huh? Well, that's the big question. Apparently this old fellow, the aged man, manufactures them in his manner, and then places them randomly in the wilderness. And no, I don't have the slightest clue as to what the point of this is supposed to be. Scaring little kids, maybe. He's definitely quite the eccentric. Scaring the curious away might be one reason, but it does not explain the level of obsession the aged man has with these wooden dolls. While sneaking through his manor, we find his workshop, which at least confirms the statues are made out of wood and not unwary travelers. And we see many of them, with strange names which don't really mean much to us. Only with hindsight, after the ending of the game, we understand that these statues refer to the cleansing and events that are about to happen, and happened already during previous cycles. This means that the aged man knows about the cycle, he is a collector of ancient artifacts. He may have researched the Pyrian and earlier civilizations and discovered the truth about their sudden disappearances. However, the servant who opens the door for us tells us this about the interesting puppets. Interesting. Yes, that they are. Master Gages always says art is unique because it allows us to see what our mind doesn't want us to see. What's that supposed to mean? Well, we all have demons inside of us, don't you agree, Miser Dalvaric? Memories, truths about ourselves we've locked away somewhere in our unconscious because we don't want to confront them. True art surpasses all these barriers because it reminds us of who we truly are. Hmm. Interesting thought. So the servant, who just casually dropped just past name and no, we did not present ourselves, says the puppets show memories, demons inside of us. He also tells us the name of the aged man, Gagius. Does he mean that the statues represent memories of Master Gagius? events which still haunt him. If the statues represent the cleansing, then the aged man must have lit one, maybe more than one. How old is exactly this aged man? This is when Jespar tells us an important piece of information. And there he goes. Call me paranoid, but this all went a little too smooth for my liking. Yeah. For example, the fact that he was already standing near the gate when you rang, and that he lives with a man who's older than the Black Guardian, at least according to the legends. But, well, to each his own. Older than the Black Guardian. At this point of our adventure, the Black Guardian is just another Enderalian myth. It's like the devil, so saying that someone is older than the Black Guardian might just be a common expression, meaning that he is very old. But Jespar refers to some legends, and we know that no legend is just a legend in Enderal. But, well, that's a topic on its own. I think it's late enough for our little excursion now. Let's find that relic. There, there it is. Master Gaius' music that transcends all barriers. Hmm, as jolly as this place. Master Gageus' music, an alternative version of the melody called Fleshless. It is a piece we only hear during this quest, adding a unique atmosphere to our exploration of the manor. The music reverberates in every stone, and we know that the aged man is somewhere close, playing the piano in his rooms. As we sneak around, surrounded by the creepy dolls, worried about every shadow, we might fail to notice a few details. The statue of an angel, watching from above, standing in the flames. A 
and a suffering face emerging from a moss in front of a statue we saw at the entrance. Is this a representation of a veiled woman in the act of creating something, evoking someone? We find a room with a fireplace and two armchairs. But doesn't the aging man live alone with a servant? Two wooden statues attract our attention. A child missing the heart, sitting on a pile of books at a table with an adult. It's a memory from Kalia's quest for the black stone, the title White Light Will Shine Within Your Eyes. Two people in combat, one about to mercilessly slaughter the other. The title, No Compromise. This could be a scene from Jasper's quest for the Blackstone. But it looks more like the moment in Old Autocrat when we first get to see Kalia's inner demon. We also find a studio with a fair wooden statue, a child with nails in his head and left leg, and an adult bought asleep the title Dreams, a clear reference to Rineus and his quest for a blackstone. In the same room there is a letter from the aging man to a dear friend. He expresses little hope for change and warns his friend against making his same mistake. Pride was my fall is the password that will lead us to the centum. So is this letter left here for us? Maybe, but it is not written for us. Our meeting is gauges, not the light. What is that he tried to change and failed? From here we find our way to the Centum, where we see a sarcophagus with a sleeping woman floating in liquid. The woman in the water is the companion of the aged man being kept alive by this contraption. We see the same thing at the end of the game, preserving the original body of the Black Guardian. And before that we see more of them during Kalia's quest for the Black Stone, Angel. What the? That's not a laboratory, that's a crypt. Irosh. Now we know that he didn't just stick to animals, but what is this fluid they're floating in? Hmm, I see. Do you see that? A crystal, but it's so dull. As if all its energy... Energy is life, and energy is death. A trifle less, not too much less, just a little. Don't disappoint me, not this time. Had been drawn from it. Maybe that was some kind of experiment for what he planned to do with the Black Stone? What? But to what end? If this device were some kind of prototype for the Angel, what did he hope to use it for? We find a similar crystal in the workshop of the aging man. 
Maybe he's also experimenting with resurrection. Maybe there is truth behind the rumors of people not coming back from his abode. Or maybe not. We do see the same crystals already in the studio of Constantine Fires Park. However, the woman in the water is alive and she speaks to us. Gages, why did you wake me? Are we there yet? too old for a jest, are you? I... I'm sorry you have to go through all this. Really. All this time. I... I can hardly imagine how hard that must be for you. But I still believe in our dream. I still do. All this time, I still believe in our dream. How old is the woman in the water? Her only way to survive seems to be using the sarcophagus, a technology as old as the Black Guardian, probably as old as the Beacon. And the dream she shares with Gageus, is it to stop the cleansing? Or maybe to leave her watery prison and live a normal life again? We read in the letter that the aged man does not have much hope these days. But the friend to whom he writes, he seems to still have some hope in dreams. Retha and Gages will be so jealous when I tell them that I have a friend like you. You are my friend, aren't you? What? Rita and Gages? Is Rhaenyl's friend with the aged man and the woman in the water? No, this is just a red herring. Rhaenyl tells us later that his friend is part of his dream world. When I play tag with Gages, for example, it's not really him that I'm running from, it's me. He's just like a doll, a puppet, and everyone who comes into Silvergrove becomes like that, even if I don't want them to. Okay, then it's just Biscuits. Although there are very few repeated names in Enderal, and the woman in the water does also live in a constant dream. But we are digressing. As we delve deeper into the manor, we finally find the world of the dead, guarded by a grotesque figure, the same we see in other sites connected to the cycle. As we open the casket, we are thrown into the memories of a frozen Parian. This part tells us more details about the Parian cycle and how some pivotal events repeat themselves, but not much about the aged man. Meanwhile, the aged man already knew everything and more. Well, what do you think? I brought you here. After you broke into my sanctum and made your little journey into the realm of the dead. <coughs> oh, please, don't look at me like that. I knew what you were up to from the start. Sadly enough, I did. No, you don't. Because you don't dare to question. Peculiar situation, all of this, isn't it? Suddenly you, the fugitive urchin, become mankind's salvation. And suddenly, just like that, out of nowhere, you can perform feats others would require decades to master. Even better, you're one of the emissaries who can hear the echo of the future. But still, you never ask yourself why. You're right, I do. But if there's one thing time has taught me, there are things one has to realize for him or herself. You can't force insight on people. It has never worked, and it never will. Who am I? Hmm. Back then, I might have given you an impressive response to that. But at this time, I couldn't say anything that would help you. Let's just say, I'm an observer. 
a fleshless eye, if you prefer. In this era, you might also know me as the aged man. Yes, and I'm certain that irritates you. But timelessness isn't that much of a feat. You will find that out yourself soon enough, too. Amongst other things, yes, the cycle. Believe me, all I say is quite thought through. But unfortunately, there's no point in pursuing this conversation any further. You have what you came for, and the rest is up to you. Even though I doubt it will make much of a difference. And it does not. It might not have been a huge surprise that the servant was actually the master, especially for those who noticed his face on the side of the mountain, on the way to the manor. But his words do not really make much sense to us at the moment, and they are soon forgotten. It is not until we meet the Black Guardian that we can finally understand what the Egypt man said. The Black Guardian is the mechanical giant we meet at the end of Enderal, the one who finally explains to us what is the cycle and what are the emissaries, fleshless ones, created by the High Ones to push the cycle towards his conclusion, the cleansing. The real Orinthiol, he is dead, Prophet. He is a fleshless one, one of the mightiest tools of the High Ones. Just as you are. In time you would have noticed it. The wrinkles in your skin would not have become any deeper, nor your hair any whiter. And if the cleansing were to be stopped, you would continue to exist forever. What reason would I have to lie to you? The explanation from the Black Guardian is much longer and full of holes, if not outright lies. Like, he does not tell us anything about the Age of Man, not even a mention. Even if the Age of Man is really older than the Black Guardian, from a previous cycle, it is impossible that he went unnoticed to the Black Guardian, an immortal living undisturbed through the cleansings. Two options are possible, the aging man is not from a previous cycle, or the Black Guardian is playing us. And we know how this encounter ends. However, just this part sheds a completely different light on what the aging man says. Let's just say, I'm an observer. A fleshless eye, if you prefer. A fleshless eye, that is a very specific choice of words. An observer of the cycle could define himself an eye, but why fleshless? And an immortal, as we will discover of ourselves soon enough. The aging man is definitely hinting at our connection, he is a fleshless one like us. But is he also an emissary, created by the high ones? A prophet, an emperor, a messiah from another cycle? Now that we have all the pieces of the puzzle, you might want to take a moment to think about the answer. There is more to see in the manner of the aging man, like our journey into the memory of a deceased Parian, and other things we find, but none seem relevant to the identity of the aging man. Who is the aging man? The more we look at the evidence, the clearer it seems that the aging man is a prophet from another cycle. No. This is impossible. But why? The Prophet dies when the Emperor leaves him. This is the course of the game. It has always been so. Yes, the Prophet always dies. Otherwise the Black Guardian would not still be here. So the Agent Man must be indeed older than the Black Guardian. Which means he has witnessed hundreds of cycles. Maybe thousands. That would explain his lack of hope in stopping the cleansing. But he must have tried, at least once. If he is a prophet, he has experienced what we go through, with some differences. He met his own version of Kalia, and they fell in love. When faced with sacrifice or escape, he chose to flee the cleansing with his companion, 
and that built a new life together in what became Miss Manor. When life reappeared, he became a god for the new humanity, in the hope to change his nature and neutralize the influence of the High Ones. Statues were built in his honor, and from his manor he ruled over all of them for thousands of years. Who am I? Hmm. Back then I might have given you an impressive response to that. But things did not go as planned. His companion got older, soon confined in a watery prison to survive, and no attempt to give their immortality succeeded. His reign ended, like the Eterna Kingdom of Asatoron in our cycle, and everything started following the known pattern. He might have tried to warn the new emissaries, might even try to help them escape the cleansing, but nothing worked and the cycles went on and on and on. At some point he realized he had no power to stop the cleansing or even help the new prophets understand the situation. He has all the knowledge, but now he won't share anymore. You're right, I do. But if there's one thing time has taught me, there are things one has to realize for him or herself. You can't force insight on people. It has never worked, and it never will. What is left now is only to observe the cycle, hoping for a change. He decides to make a reputation as a collector of artifacts. This way he's sure to know when the cleansing is approaching, as the prophet always counts for the word of the dead. At every cleansing he transports his home away, keeping his companions safe and then coming back when the cleansing is over. Observing again. If we accept this narrative, many details suddenly make sense. For example the letter, which is not a letter to the Black Guardian. He mentions having an eye to observe in, but it's just a mechanical part. Yes, but a part of the Goliath is the eye. It allows me to see what happens on the surface everywhere. Not as literal as you imagine, of course. I see schemes, feel emotions, similar to your gift, to the Echo. But they are enough to understand. No, the letter is for someone with a reachable address, where a letter can be received. Someone who knows about the fall of the aged man, the fall of a god. Don't let my mistake be the same as yours. And then, in brotherly love, who would the aged man consider a brother? He lives on a solitary cliff, isolated from the rest of civilization. His misanthropy is legendary. The only possibility is another prophet, someone who survived the cycle before the age of the Black Guardian. A prophet who did not get his chance to intervene in the cycle and still has hope. And he's right, the events on Nerim seem to have changed the course of the cycle, as a prophet once again gets to survive the search for the Numinos and to make a choice. Will we take this chance to brave the beacon, or will we fly to the Star City, following the steps of the aged man? Pride was his fall. But pride is the primary motivator of the Emperor, we clearly see Tilor succumbing to it. What if Gagius is an Emperor? I thought so when I started this video, before looking systematically at all the evidence. Pride is what pushes the Emperor, but he does not have a monopoly on it. We do have human feelings, we are susceptible to pride, and it is used to push us along. You are the only figure of significance in this game, Prophet. We also know that the Emperor lights the beacon, Tust never survives. And what we encounter in the house only makes sense to a Prophet. The music played by the aged man, Fleshless, is the same we hear in our dreams of Daddy. And from the music box we find near our body in the Living Temple, a character theme for the Prophet, for all the prophets and prophetesses.
Fleshless is also the title of a quest where we need to make our final choice, sacrifice or escape. Everything tells us that the story of the aging man is our story, right from the start. The voice which introduces us to the events of Enderal and to this video is actually the voice of the aging man. Just listen for a moment. If you want a piece of advice, listen. You won't hear anything comparable in all of Vin. But all of this was merely a diversion so that no one would notice something else. There you go. And there we go. All of this was merely a diversion, so that no one would notice something else. That is per se a theme in Enderal, and especially true in the case of the Agent Man. Even his mystery, although extremely meaningful, serves also as an incredibly elaborate distraction from a deeper secret. Just bear with me again, and ask yourself, who is the woman in the water? Some details only start to make sense now, like this clock we find in the studio, still ticking, but stuck in time. You see, immortality is not really a good definition for our condition. We are affected by sickness, and we can die. Gage speaks more appropriately about timelessness. Time simply does not affect him anymore. He and his whole mansion are metaphorically stuck in time just waiting and waiting for something to change in the world outside. But there was a time when the aged man and the woman in the water lived happily together in this house. Before humanity even reappeared, they sat in these archers, in front of a fire, the last two people in Vin but still having each other. What we see here now is a skull, symbol of mortality, and a tip scale, symbol of injustice. With all his power, Gage still cannot do anything for his companion. For the woman in the water is not fleshless. Just like Kalia in Jespar, she has been resurrected in her own body. She is not a projection. We see our companions reacting to the cleansing, and we know that Kalia was resurrected as a child, and has grown into a woman since. So we know that our companions and like us, we age in time and die, or be confined in a sarcophagus. Still, how do we know that the woman in the water is a previous version of Kalia? We saw the statues, but that just means that Kalia and Rineus are characters repeating at the end of the cycle, the same way that there is always someone trying to transfer his conscience into a robot. Maybe Gageus already had a companion before his adventure started, or maybe his Jasper was a woman, and he fled the cleansing with her. But there is no statue representing Jasper, when having three statues representing the three quests for the black stones would seem sort of... expected. Both statues in the living room are really about Kalia. A version in progress of this statue is also seen in the workshop, which would make three statues about Kalia. And then there is the angel. Kalia was not just resurrected, but infused with the power of a black stone to create the angel, a being meant to save humanity from its misery. Statues of angels are pretty common in Enderal, and we see copies of this one also in the Sun Temple. But this figure has something different. If we look closer, we can notice a shadow or a stain. Maybe a sign of the weather, corrosion by the rain. A mark which appears on all copies of the statue, on the left side of its face. Ah, oh, of course, you mean my mark. I have had that for as long as I can remember, and I don't have the slightest idea as to how I got it. Yes, I know. Maybe it was Del Galar when he, you know, treated me. But I fear I'll never find out now. But we do know, don't we tell Kalia? She does not have it when she's resurrected, so the mark must be placed by the veiled woman. 
still a stain on the statue since too thin of a proof to jump to conclusions. No, our strongest lead that the woman in the water is a previous version of Kalia is the fact that she's still alive. How long could a person survive in this sarcophagus, even if it helps in preserving the body, even if in deep sleep? Apart from the woman in the water, we only see dead bodies in it. But Kalia is special, the power of a black stone keeps her heart beating, and so the woman in the water. A line by Jespar in his last words to us, a line which is not paralleled by Kalia, seems to corroborate this. But then again, it, it is your call. If we flee, I won't live to see this new mankind. Jespar wouldn't live that long. Kalia would, still not the way we'd like. We would end up just like the woman in the water and the aged man. Just like... Reetha and Gages? You got me there, Rineus. Can't deny it. But it's actually Kalia and Gages. You see, Kalia is special. But not for the reasons we think. At every cycle, a girl is resurrected with a black stone. Then the veiled woman erases her memory and gives her the name Kalia. It was stitched into the blanket they found me in near that village. I don't really know if it is my actual name, but I had nothing else to go with, so it stuck. Kalia is the only person who really repeats at every cycle. There could be a prophet or a prophetess, an emperor or an empress, but Kalia is always Kalia. And she's Marso by the Veiled Woman. Poor little creature. You don't have the slightest idea how special you are, do you? Kalia. The Angel in the Water. The Angel in the Fire. And so we arrive at our conclusion. It's time to leave the manner of the aged man, hopefully wiser than we arrived. And though the future might not seem bright for us, it might be one day for the woman in the water and the aged man. For Kalia and Gages. Thanks for watching, and well blessed.